Hi everyone and welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial um, importing camera movements from Flare to Maya using FBX file format um, we got to the point where we have this camera movement with an image plane in Maya and um, we can see the image plane running through the camera um, everything is working fine and our camera is somewhere in the 3D space but we actually don't really exactly where um, by the way, if, if if you don't know what I'm talking about, it means that you probably haven't seen part one yet. So to catch up with things, go on our YouTube page. We've got a YouTube channel, Mark Roberts Motion Control, and under the section Mark Roberts Tutorials and behind the scene, you will probably find part one of this tutorial. It's plenty of useful information anyway. Um, we've got Peter Rush is making loads of tutorials to explain things about motion controls. So just go get wild definitely what's a watch um, coming back to this we are now in the place where we have a camera that is moving and we want to do the extra step for you know helping our fellow CG animator uh, to contextualize the ca this camera movement to a geometry so I modeled um, very roughly um our props the plinth and the can of pain there they are amazing <laughs> it, it took me seriously a lot of time um and they are uh, the zeros so they're the, the, their position at the data points and what we want to do is to position them in the right place um i'll just rename this group because i don't like the default um i call it uh props GRP. and what we want to do is to uh, move these camera groups so that it makes sense in terms of positioning and then from there maybe we can start adding things on top I don't know maybe price tags let's say this is a commercial and you want to show a floating price tag on you know how cheap is the paint and stuff um, how do you do this? I mean, y you can't really do that by eye. It's going to be impossible if like an endless task, uh, because what you're going to have is, uh, you know, you will have to put position by eye this group trying to match the right position. And it's just maybe not, you know, it's going to take ages. So the way we do this is through um, reference point. Um, what is reference point? I made a video and with this video I'm literally coming back from the future using the camera movement I've imported from Flare just to show you what are reference points. When the... Um, how do I play this? I'll just grab it through. Um, right after you are happy with the camera movement with your motion control and you are wrapping because everyone is happy and your job is done as a three uh, as a motion control operator what you want to do is to create a new job in flare and set up three camera positions with the rig per reference points that you want to pass through the Maya scene in this case we've got one two three four reference points, one for the center of the can and three for the three corners of the plinth. Each reference point will have three camera movements because what we're going to do is to use the three camera movements to triangulate triangulate <laughs> the position of each reference point and the way we're going to do that, we're going to do that in Maya basically trying to find the point in common between three different camera position and um, using their aim vector to do this so this is what I did quickly in, in Maya I just modeled the arrows and just to show you the point where we can get with a good positioning of the camera movement and a good proxy modeling of um, the props that you've got on set so it's essential that first your rig flare is 
properly calibrated, it's properly set up with the right kinematics and the right nodal offset. That is an essential point for this workflow to effectively work down the line. Also, you don't want to move, you don't want to move the props before taking the reference point because otherwise you will have misalignment and that not, is not going to work. So back to Maya. I've got a scene here to illustrate you furtherly how our motion control operator DEG took the reference point for this case scenario. So at frame zero, I've got this position and I want to show you that the camera on set will actually look, if, you, if you're looking through the camera, you will say that the camera is aiming at the corner. Well, in this case, is the first is the first reference point. So as we can see here, at frame zero, we will have this bit. So we are still aiming at the, can, the center of the can. So we're aiming at the center of the cam, frame zero. At frame one, it's a completely different camera position and rig configuration, and we are looking still at the center of the can. And at frame two, completely different. The camera will not have to be run through the timeline, but is more like a set of different rig positions that will give you different camera positions to then triangulate and find the reference points. So frame zero, one, two, that's the center of the can. Frame 10, 11, 12, that would be the back corner, as you can see here, 10, 11, 12, and then 20, 21, 22, and so on and so forth for the other reference points. The next step, once we got your scene here, I'll just re-zero this back to the default. Oops. Um, let's import the reference points camera movement that we've got from Flare in FBX file format. That would be in FBX file format as well. It's going to be called the reference point. And as usual, the camera is a bit too small. There it is. So as you can see here, we just got 32 keyframes because the move is 32. Is long. It's 32 frames long. So, um, what we want to do, I'll just quickly hide this one to just make things simple around here. I'm just gonna create a locator, and I'm gonna call it um, nodal look and what I want to do is to have this locator at the nodal point of our camera so I will zero it so now it's not there frame zero is the first position so what I'm going to do is to duplicate at frame zero the nodal locator and then I'm just gonna unparent it from the camera and then I'm going to do the same process with frame one I'm gonna take the, lo the locator at frame one duplicate it unparent it and same at frame two duplicate it unparent it and then what I want to do I'll just hide this to show you better what's going to happen. I'm going to select each locator there and then I'm going to move them in Y. Sorry, in Z. Be careful. You want the, the transform handle to be selected on object rather than word because if you move them in word they will move them relative to the word value 
whereas you want to move them relative to the local transformations which are along the aim axis so keep w pressed and then select object and that will allow you to move through the aim axis which is z in maya so i'll do that again reselect everything and move them along the z axis and as you can see the locators are getting closer and closer and closer and closer and what you want to do is to find the point where all these locators are going to meet and that will be your triangle your camera triangulation that's it moving on z moving on z let's get closer um, depending on how good was your rig setup and how straight the camera on your camera plate was mounted you will get to a really good definition of your reference point through triangulation as you can see here I've got one name that is not quite close to the others um, but yeah I think I can be quite satisfied with these guys right now so what we have left to do is to basically I'm just gonna group these guys and call them uh, can ref group and I don't really need this group here so I'm just gonna take this group away and then I keep going on with the other reference points so we were at frame 2 the next frame it's going to be frame 10, 11, 12 for the back corner down there uh, you can see that uh, so I'm just gonna go back and frame 10 again duplicate the nodal and parent 11 duplicate the nodal and parent 12 same thing uh, and once again I'll hide the camera select everything it's still in local transformations so it's good drag in Z okay get closer be select this and that get closer to that so it's a bit time consuming but this will help you greatly later on to align your camera movement to the geometry um, I think I can be quiet oops that's the wrong axis. This one is the right one. Um, is that? Group this. I'm quite corner one. with corner 2 that would be 20 and parent 1 generally speaking 2 reference points 2 3 reference points should be enough but in this case I wanted to be sure that the can was in the right position on top of the plinth so We've done that extra step in order to better align um, the camera to the geometry. In these cases, the most information that you can do and pass down the line to post production facilities, the better it is. You're going to help them. That's a generally good service that you want to provide. close there mm. that's not too happy <laughs> just remind that the only axis that you can 
move the locators along is the aim axis which in Maya is C and let's go to the last reference point that would be 30 duplicate oops wrong group 31 and 32 there you go hide the camera we don't need the th the the flare reference camera anymore because what we wanted from it out of it at least was these reference points it was the location of the real features in 3d something relaxing in doing this um, when it works <laughs> there you go all right so Looking from far, we can already see the geometry. These are the three corners of the plinth, and then this is going to be the center of the can. Um, now what we want to do, I'll drop these chops um, and call it corner three group. Um, we want to create a a single group containing reference points and the camera that we've imported from Flare. So select camera, select the groups, group it under camera, I will call it Flare Cam referenced group then I the way I approach this is usually creating a locator above this group so and position it first where I want it to um, where I want it related to the group so that I can use it as a handle I will show you how basically creating a locator and I'm gonna call it uh, camera um, off flare camera offset locator and the way I want to position it because I can snap with Maya easily geometry to components of geometries so I'm gonna snap it keeping the hotkey V pressed and with the middle mouse button I'm gonna snap it to these locators here which is the locators of the core from right corner of the plinth after I've done that I'll take the group and I will parent it to this camera offset locator now I can move the group, rotate it, relates to the position of the locator I've created and snapped in this way. And the easiest, the easiest thing to do at this point would be keeping V pressed and middle mouse button, snap it to this point. And already, as you can see, the way I have modeled the props or the geos uh was basically just like very basic i've got like one single vertex per corner and is a very base cylinder is actually the standard cylinder out of maya and the standard is a standard cube out of maya which is just stretched to make the measure i did actually survey the scene and the props so i know 
that is the right measurement. However, the, the objects are not as detailed as in real life. So let's see what I've got through. Um, first, let's see if everything is more or less aligned properly because it looks a bit like there is here. It's not very well oriented. No, neither. Um, let me enable the wireframe on top and to see how we're doing. So it looks to me that maybe it should be more to the left so that that is a bit more centered and that is a bit more centered. These guys here are more centered like that. Um, something like that. Okay. It doesn't seem to... Maybe a bit of rotation there. So I'll just... With plus I can increase the handle, the rotation handle to help me to be more sensitive to rotation. So maybe I just rotate it a bit better there so it goes down a bit. And just to the center maybe a bit too much. Something like that. Oop. There you go. I can increase this a bit more, just a bit, bit more precise. Okay. Um. There may be a bit to the right like that. That should be quite good. Um, the center of the can doesn't seem to center, so I'll just move the can a bit to the left. Let's see that from the top view, just to be sure. Yeah, it doesn't look too centered to me, so maybe like that. Uh, okay, um, let's check out what we see through the camera, and um, let's go from there. So, because what we did was having the camera settings coming from Fleur and let's double check what the settings are. So the focal length is 12 but one thing I want to say about focal length and camera calibration is you will never actually know what is the real focal length of the camera. 12 millimeters is the nominal value of the lens that we have on the lens itself, but really we don't know up until we calibrate the camera properly with lens grid what the real lens measurement is. <laughs> Let's give them for granted that the sensor size is right because we take the sensor size measurements from the website or through the data sheet of the uh, manufacturer on their website so we know for sure that the sensor is right however the focal length not so we will only know the right focal length once we calibrated the camera sorry the lens with appropriate workflows with entails using lens grids and going through the distortion as well which we didn't do here because it's actually rare that we do that beforehand or on uh, motion or during a motion control shot so let's change the focal length slightly and see if this is help in any way to um, match the geometry on top of our plane I will just go a bit bigger Yeah, by the look of it, it looks that we should go a bit further. Mm. Something like that. Let's call it 13.5. So already the line on the plinth are matching and the curvature seems all right. Oh, the, I mean the distortion seems alright. Um, it looks a bit. It looks that I've maybe rotated too much, but definitely the can is matching at least for the 
for the end bit but he's sliding a bit in the first bit in the first part of the shot so your choices here what do you want to do but you've got two choices really one is to try to finesse and maybe animate the offset of your camera to match better the animation um, so hand animate the offset in order to match the camera movement better on the image plane or you you pass through the camera as it is now which is already a, a fairly decent point if you want to start to kind of position new things um, like the price the floating price inside that we were talking about the advertising if that's an advertising of what you want to do and then send the camera maybe to send the camera maybe to the FBX camera to uh, um, a match mover artist that will analyze the footage and will track the camera uh, maybe using the FBX that you give them um, as a hint for their software solver in order to then um, match move a proper uh, solution out of it. Um, I know that there are at least two softwares out there that support FBX as hint for the solver and one if one if is PF track from Pixel Farm and the other one is 3D Equalizer. Um, but feel free to comment on our YouTube videos if you want to suggest another software that allows us to do that. Um, as a purpose of this tutorial I will show you how to uh, massage a bit the uh, camera offset and animate it in order to match it a bit better so that we can get to this point here which is a fairly decent point and I don't think it floats too much um, you can see um, you can have also a shadow cast on the proxy geometry um, that I've done with Maya and you can use the can also as a pulled out so you don't need to rotoscope really I mean here it's not too precise but it works and it is a decent point already if you think that no match mover uh, was involved um, so let's go back to Maya alright so um, we were saying maybe the plane seems to be rotated a bit too much so what I'm gonna do is select back the rotation of um, the camera group and maybe I'm just going to rotate it back a bit of what it was um, and then up there that looks all right so from here no that was a bit too much I want to re-zero this rotation here I'm not happy with it and the sliding seems to occur at the beginning so what I'm going to do is to the camera doesn't seem to move for the first 10 frames and then kicks in so what I'm going to do is to store this position which I'm fairly happy with apart from the cylinder it should be a bit higher there you go but with the plinth I'm okay it looks alright to me so what I'm going to do is to go back to the camera group and keyframe it and then when I'm the camera move moves it slides a bit it goes down and then it stops at round frame 10 so this is where I want to put reposition my offset and I'm just going to slide it up and a bit to the left, right, just like that. And then a bit up again. Good. I like that. So from here, I'm just going to key select there and let's check out how it works.
I go to Shabby. Still holding pretty well. Considering there is no distortion and and the f and, and the plane is not being distorted either, um, I think this is a pretty decent point. And and from here maybe we can um, apply. I'm going to show you the um, arrows that I've created in order to explain the reference point situation. Uh, where is it? Arrows. Uh, no, I don't really want to save that. I really want to import my arrows. <laughs> there you go. Import it. Um, oh, they're in down there. So we just call it arrows group. I move them here. Um, let's position them correctly. The arrows were basically pointing at the reference point like that. Cool, and then what I can do is to um, hide the props and look through the camera in shaded mode. Oh, um, one last thing. As you can see here, the image plane is basically eating out my geometry, and the reason is that it's too close. <coughs> to the camera, sorry, to the camera. So what I can do is select the image plane and there should be a value called depth. That's in centimeters. So what I'm gonna do is just pull it back to one meter. There you go. Um, maybe I'm just gonna hide the reference point. And the aim, I want to say, and we are now ready to start setting up lighting and shadows and whatever you want and get on with your visual effects and and create beautiful things so this is everything for this tutorial if you've got any question please don't hesitate to leave a comment on our youtube videos and i hope to see you soon